Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and I've been wanting to look at these for a while. Some of you may recognise them, or at least if you don't recognise them, they'll be a bit familiar to you. These are known as a Polish combination lock. I've been in contact with the designer, um, and I'll guess his name probably pronounced incredibly wrong, but I think it's um, Zbigniew, and he let me borrow these two locks to just explore. I have already had a go at trying to uh, manipulate these and I have to say that I can't get anywhere with it. So I will go into more detail but essentially you need to unblock the wheels first by using a key turning it anti-clockwise twice then that unblocks the wheels. Only when you've unblocked the wheels can you attempt a code and then you need the key again to drop the actuator arm down into the gates which are either false or true and if that's not right, then you have to go through that cycle again. And um, these larger uh, locks like this, and actually I say larger, the profile isn't actually that big, uh, can have um, upwards of around 10 million different combinations. So yeah, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be decoding one of these anytime soon, even if I uh, had the ability, but I really want to see what's going on with these locks, uh, what they're like to use, uh, and maybe give some um, details about how they work and my comments about what I think their future is. And I just want to show you these as well. I haven't opened them, look. I've tried to manipulate the locks without, but uh, look at this. Padlock and safe code inside special 3D printed boxes, and I, I need to crack these open to um, to even be able to get in. I don't, <laughs> I've got to probably find a different tool. Oh, there we go. Um, isn't that cool? So like, yes, even the code is secure in this case. So first of all, let's explore how this works and then we can explore the mechanism. I'm just gonna read from the letter that um, I was given with these two locks. It says both Polish combination locks are set up in such a way that without the key, all of the code wheels are blocked, like this. You can't turn them to put a code in. So you need the key to actually unlock the wheels in the first place. It's not unusual for safe type combination locks to have a check key of some kind to even allow you to um, manipulate the wheels even as the owner of the lock. So you could in theory pick this lock, which is a shielded, um, I suppose any lock could go in there, but this one has to be a shielded tubular one. So you could in theory pick this or unlock the wheel pack, but then that's only half the story because the actuator doesn't engage until you essentially put a code in and then you'd have to pick the lock again to engage the actuator and then test it and you're likely to be wrong because there is a you know <laughs> there's 10 million combinations for this and then you'd have to redo it all again the amount of time spent picking it assuming you could pick it assuming you had the right uh, way of tensioning it and uh, and doing full rotations of this, assuming you could pick it, imagine how many times you'd have to have a go at pick, uh, picking it and uh, changing the combination to, to get an open. Um, I'd imagine that would probably take years. Anyway, let's actually have a go at opening this lock, following the instructions, and ho hopefully you'll see quite how it would be very, very resistant to a brute force attack with um, you know picking and trialing out codes. The first thing is you need to put the key in and this only goes in one way. I quite like this shielded lock. It would be very difficult to get a full rotation on this um, without some, you know, probably homemade uh, tension tools and you probably need more than one. Okay, so you pop that in and then it says basically to, to rotate this around a counterclockwise couple of times and then you'll see that the wheels are loose. Now, to save time, I've put most of the code in, but I need to change this to a Z or a Z. Um, I don't know if this means anything in Polish, uh, Z-O-J-N-H, but that's what we have. And then what you need to do, when, once that's correct, then you turn this clockwise until you end up at the two o'clock position, which is here. Now what you've done is counterclockwise, um, you've just unlocked the wheel pack. Clockwise now, we've lowered the actuator into what are either the true gates or the false gates. 
which means that I can then turn this and then release the shackle. And you'll see, if you look inside the shackle there, there's just inside, there's these little, let's call them paws, which move back and forth to release the shackle. Very cool, and of course, that would be an anti-shim shackle. And then to close it back up, you just move it back to the original code, like that. Then you just do this counterclockwise until it's at 10 o'clock. Then we can mix the code up so it's released the wheel pack. So I'm just going to move it to here again, like that. And then once you've done that, you can just move this clockwise and release it like that. And then it's blocked back up again. So nobody's gonna get into that now. With practice, you can get into this lock, I would say in well under 30 seconds, about 20 seconds if you work fast with the, with the code wheels. It's genuinely not that hard to use. And I think that the idea that it uses a separate key um, just adds a huge layer of security to this lock. Although I've seen Potty314, fantastic pick, a great channel. Please go check him out. I'll, I'll leave a link to the video I'm going to mention now anyway. Um, exploring this lock, but in a different format where there was a dial instead of um, a key and the inside didn't have an actuator that you needed to release with the key. So it was a, a, a little bit faster, albeit a little um, uh, less secure to a degree. Although, frankly, the way that this lock is built, and I'm going to show you the inside of the safe where we can um, disassemble it slightly, I'm not entirely sure that the key is even necessary in terms of um, you know it's your ability to actually decode this. I think this is genuinely not decodable unless you partially destroy the, the lock. So um, if you were a safe smith, you might want to drill um, holes in here to access the insides um, or, or use some fully destructive technique to open it up. So here's the safe. And can we just say that I, I really love this? I, I know everything's 3D printed because it's a great rapid prototyping tool, but this is a really, really lovely object. I absolutely love it. So yeah, I, I know that we're not looking at the actual aesthetics, but it's a really, really cool 3D printed safe. I, I really genuinely like this, it's great. Okay, so same thing again. Uh, we put the key in, we rotate it anti-clockwise a couple of times, and then release the wheel pack, which will allow us to manipulate it. And yeah, you can probably guess what the code is because I was feeling lazy. Then we do a couple of rotations clockwise until um, we're at two o'clock, and then we should be able to turn this and there we go, look at that. And clearly it can be as uh, big or as deep as you want. Um, oh, a pin's just fallen out the top. That's good actually, because this is actually a way to actually disassemble it to look on the inside of the mechanism, which is really, really cool. And I suggest that we so take these pins out and that allows you to take this front plate off, which is nice and tight on there. as it should be. There we go. And then you can see the insides. And I think that the simplicity of this lock is just fantastic. So you can see that once you have the right combination, this can be turned back and forth. And what you've got for remove the bolt on the inside here, and just get something to point with, you can see how this actuator, so move it all the way back to the top, this actuator has to drop down from the top into these gates. Now, all along here, in the, you can see these are false gates, and this is actually a set of six different wheels, very, very small, very flat uh, safe wheels, and naturally the true gate is deeper, but the thing about this, and I think that the, the, well, the USP of this really, is the fact that the actuator doesn't touch the wheel pack at all until, in, in this lock in particular, until you're ready to try the code. And it's only once you put the actuator down inside it, can you then test whether it's the right code or not. And if it's wrong, then you've got to restart and try again and again. So let's see if I can use the key 
just to reset this so that you can see what it looks like when it is locked and scrambled. So here's what the lock looks like when it's been locked and scrambled and you can see that this is the actuator here and this actuator is sort of a, like a rack and pinion arrangement and this central axis here is associated with that little cam lock in the center. That is what releases this actuator down onto that wheel pack and will drop into only the true gates. You can see all the way around all these false gates. Uh, you might be able to see that this here is deeper than this here and that's the true gate but you've got to have that on all six wheels aligned at the top for this to actually be able to drop below this shear line and allow the whole pack to turn as one when they're all locked together. If they're not all locked together that means the actuator hasn't fallen into all of the true gates and it will not turn. It's just a really interesting mechanism. So let me show you now what this looks like when you are using the key and putting the right combination in from the other side. So what you can see here is the inside of this lock when it's been scrambled it's not in the right code actually it's only one wheel but it's still the same even with one wheel the actuator doesn't reach down to shear it's resting within a false gate in fact in this case five false gates but it still will not open this essentially locks that wheel pack and it cannot be moved so let's see what happens when we put the key in and we rotate it anti-clockwise there you go and we leave it in the right position what that's done now hopefully you can see that is it's moved that actuator up this means that these wheels are free to move completely free to move and you are then free to put that into the correct gates so it was in a halfway position we have then unlocked it we've moved this actuator up now it's up that means the wheel pack has been released we can now put it into the right code so I put the right code in and now what we need to do is move this and until the actuator itself then slides down you see that I just turn the key until the actuator slides down but now it's gone really deep it's actually reached shear you can see here that all of these false gates are aligned the true gates are aligned that means this actuator can drop down now it's dropped down all the wheels are fully engaged we can then turn this whole wheel pack and that would normally drag this locking bar or bolt there you go, across I mean that is a really genius mechanism and that's why I don't think that you can manipulate this lock there is a gap between when it's unlocked and you allow the wheels to be moved there is a gap between the actuator itself the drop arm if you wish in safe terminology and the gating so the, uh, the only way to test whether you got the true combination is to drop this arm down into that gating and if it's wrong then you're gonna have to go through the whole process again in that regard it's a really brilliant mechanism so what do I think of this mechanism in general? Um, well, reading from the letter that came with this, it says the beauty of this solution is the very simple concept of separation of the coding mechanism from the opening mechanism. The air gap and magnetic coupling separation eliminate in this model the possibility of tensioning the mechanism and therefore it's impossible to decode it. So there's no way you can't pull the shackle, you can't push on anything with the safe, there's no way to turn it or use the key to add tension to the lock to test a true gate versus a false gate. It really is sort of binary. You have a, an up position and a down position on the actuator and the only way to test whether you're in the right gate if you if you like is by testing to see whether you can move the wheel pack. If you can't you've got to try another combination and there are so many combinations uh, that are possible that I 
I really don't think this can be manipulated without some form of destructive or, or, or semi-destructive technique. But how does it compare to other locks and safe locks? Well, um, I think quite favourably. Here is another safe lock, and, uh, and you can see from the profile that it is still quite deep. Now, the advantage of this is that whilst it does have multiple wheels on the inside, and these are these types of lock can go up to four, maybe five wheels, I think. I'm not an expert on safes. Um, you only need one dial at the front to turn it. If you get it wrong, then you just uh, reset it by turning it clockwise or anti-clockwise a few times and then try again. Um, with this lock, the actual profile is very, very slim. Um, and so it's, it's no major issue with the size. Apart from the fact that in terms of ease of use, you would have an extra key, so it's something else to have to carry around with you. Um, but like I said, you could, you could, and it has been made anyway, make one of these that doesn't need the key and just needs a combination. At which case, I think that it's a generally great anti-manipulation mechanism because it's purely mechanical. And actually, when you look at the mechanism inside, it's surprisingly simple is elegant is the right word i think sometimes we say simple we think that's bad it really isn't you want a mechanism to be um, as less complex as possible while offering the most security that's possible so that you end up with something which is reliable and when it comes to locking up your personal effects you want secure and you want reliable and you do that through the elegance of simplicity so in that regard i absolutely love this mechanism in terms of its security against physical attacks, well, honestly, it's going to be no better or worse than nearly any other lock. And I can think of things like the Sergeant and Greenleaf Environmental being a particular lock, which is a combination padlock. It's very secure and would be no better or worse from physical attacks than one of these made out of metal. Which brings me on to something which I think is really important to say is that the designer of this was trying to make one of these out of metal, but unfortunately the, the person who was doing that decided to not carry on with the project. That means that currently this lock can't be found, or this, and this locking mechanism cannot be found in a metal prototype, nor is it currently going to be uh, incorporated into a commercially available lock or safe. I think that's a, a really, really big shame. Clearly, this is a fantastic mechanism. It's, a, it's, it's Like I said, it's elegant. It offers a huge degree of security. And I think in the right application, it can be really, really, really useful. Um, so where do we conclude? I would say, let me know what you think of this lock in the comments. Um, I think some you know good feedback, some, some positive comments would be really helpful. But also, if you are, um, a lock manufacturer. Do get in contact with me or the designer of this if you are interested in taking forward this lock to, to a prototype or if you are a manufacturer who might be able to do that please you know use this channel as a way to contact the designer or go to the website which I'm going to obviously link in the description because I you know wouldn't it be a fantastic story for um, a, a, a single designer making a, a, a novel mechanism finally getting one of these locks into production I would absolutely love to see that. So, yes, thank you so much for lending this to me. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the, the demonstration. I hope you enjoyed the lock and the mechanism as well. And uh, let me know what you think of it in the comments, as I said. And I'll see you all next time.